Say, so do the blessings of Molid take time to manifest? How do we ensure blessings unfold without blocking them? This from Allah that nothing takes time to manifest but the blessings of Miladha Nabi is dressing the soul immediately. As soon as somebody made intention for the milad, supported the milad, participated in the milad, is already dressing their soul, their ancestry, their jad, their families, their children, everything has immense lights, immense realities, immense the blessings and the heart opening. So that is a, is a given that is immediate and it's immense. If people are asking for particular requests, those they have to be patient with when Allah when Allah loves the servant, you have to understand that in your dreams you'll see yourself driving because you think you're in control of your life and I'm going to make a right turn here, I'm going to make a left turn here, I'm going to stop and get some food here. And you think that in this later stage of taslim is the same, that you're making du'as, you want all these things to happen. but. The reality of taslim and submission is get in the back of the car because when you drive there's a lot of problems. And eventually you begin to see yourself in dreams where like you're on the side of the car because you're struggling to submit. And the real dream is that we don't like dreams but this is an analogy is that you have to be in the back of the car in which you know your life is no longer in your hands. And Allah knows what du'a is for you, Allah knows what's going to open for you, Allah knows what's best what He doesn't want to open for you and that's called submission. So when you have a submission and a, and a taslim in your heart, you have to be so happy that Allah allowed you to celebrate the milad, that was the greatest accomplishment. Then He'll set your affairs in order. That just stay out of the way and let Allah take care of everything. But that requires patience, tawassud bi haqq wa tawassud bi sabr. What's uh, Surat al-Asr? That verily man is in a descent, right? He's, he's, he's anxious that he will want to accomplish everything, want everything his way. And Allah is describing that you is in a descent means your life is… As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh Moving, not in your control. But this tawassul bi haqq wa tawassul bi sabr that relying on the truth and that the truth its way is paved in the bricks of, of patience. Have patience and get your hands off the steering wheel. That the biggest accomplishment is that you are allowed to celebrate the milad, that you are allowed to feel in your heart, I want to celebrate, I want to participate, I love to do the nasheeds. This is Allah's greatest gift. The rest, let me settle your affairs, let me pay what needs to be paid down, let me give you what you need to be given, let me sort of handle everything. And it's not about, oh all my requests didn't come because it wasn't about what I wanted, it's about what Allah wants for me is important, inshaAllah. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa so, how to find love and compassion while you are in distress? How to find love and passion compassion. while you're in distress? Yeah, it's a, a state of 
being that we described it as if in life why to worry about the past? Shaitan has two ropes he's going to throw on your neck. One he holds from behind and one rope he'll put onto the front of the servant. And then that two ropes he holds them. The rope behind is the past. I could have, I should have and I would have. And people use all their energy of that day. We gave the example before, for example I have a hundred watts to reach the heavens. I start to use 50 watts of thinking about the past. I should have, could have, would have, everything. And in every aspect of what I did with the kids, myself, my life, my choices, my business, my work. So then now he got 50% of my charge is gone. When he finished with that, now my fear of the future. What can I do and what should I be planning? And they exert so much of their energy of what the future is going to bring, how will it come, how should I achieve it, all the things I have to do and then another 50% of my charge is gone. So I, for that day I lost my entire charge, all my energy was on my past and all my energy on the fears of the future and I never lived that day for what it was. So then of course I'm going to wake up tomorrow very depressed, very anxious now and I'll do it again tomorrow with the energy that I was given. And so what the teaching keeps teaching us but you have to put it into practice. The past is gone, it's already been written, Allah forgave you because you're hearing these sobats. There's nothing you can do with the past, don't even mention the past. That past you should have buried like a dead body, you don't bring it back up like a cadaver. And the future is not in your hands. So if you're truly taslim, what your future? Where my rizq gonna come? Well that's not based on the future, that rizq is based on the zikr that you do right now. So when they understand they can't do anything from the future and the, the past they already buried it, that day they sit down and say, I gotta do my awrah, I gotta do my recitation, I gotta sit and connect with the shaykh. The shaykhs don't have that because they're already connected. So they just sit and do their zikr and, and keep the connection of their flow. So it means that they live in the moment that Allah gave to them. And in that moment they get their dressing, they get their understandings, they get their tajalli, they get their blessings. So imagine if you do that and practice that every day that today I'm going to make sure I do my awrad, my connection, breathe, make everything good, head to work. You did everything of the present tense, you built that energy and then you use the energy of that day to enjoy that one day, that given day, that moment of the presence. And as a result your spiritual power manifests everything for that day to be good and correct. So if somebody can understand and unlock on how to live in the presence, they take away depression, they take away anxiety. They're not sad about the past, they're not anxious about the future. And that's why I said then they can fly because they sit and they're meditating and their soul is uplifting. And they feel good that they're connected with Allah they're getting the coordinates for that day and they make their connection and that's all that's important. And if that day is good and they made a good connection Allah provides them a sufficient rizq. That's all you have to worry about but if your mind trying to grasp Oh the rizq, where everything going to come from? You lost it because that won't even come with your mind. This way comes based on their connection to Allah and Allah provides them to eat. You keep praying, don't worry about that, I send you food to eat. So that's the, the whole tariqah ways is cut those two ropes and live for the moment that you're living in. Make sure your connection is strong, your practices are strong, inspiration comes to you of what needs to be done and you accomplish that what needs to be done and Allah then starts it again tomorrow inshaAllah.
don't know who's going to be here today, who's going to be tomorrow, which country will be existing today, which country will be existing tomorrow. So make sure you're, you're connected in the present, in the present, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Sayyidi, we have felt, Ya Sayyidi, when people intend to support tariqah, the rizq earning becomes difficult as if shaitan holding back. How to open the financial rizq so as to support more? Yeah, we found the opposite. We found that anybody who supported us, the rizqs were like fountains overflowing. So again, if you're thinking about it, then you're using your head and that's, that's not what this was about like sit at the zikr and keep thinking, well how am I going to do this, we're going to do this. Is that I'm going to sit, I'm going to meditate, I'm going to contemplate and then I'm give my charity, make my contributions, make my connections and with the connection, the madad and all of these spiritual experiences, Allah then inspires what the work should be doing. And with that connection the work begins to flow, the contracts begin to come. But when you think through your aqal and your mind then that, that's not the way. So people whom they contribute they do, the people came for mawlid there were so many stories that they didn't think, they came for the mawlid, they gave support, they got a phone call at the mawlid, they got an email at the mawlid, you're now at this position, you got this, two or three people. So means this is our exact, this is the life that we've lived for 30 years like this. That you give, you support, you do what Allah wanted you to do. Leave the rest and the miracle for Allah And He provides from ways that people could never understand or not ever comprehend. But if people always waiting like it's a business deal, they, oh if I get this big contract I'll do this, you'll never do it. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll support the Mawlid next month. Ma Mawlid came and the person ran away and didn't honor his support. Never, never follow the nafs of people. Means what you're gonna do, you do it right away, you support right away. And you support so that Allah begin to send you. We said before the shaykh has like magic beans, the du'as have so much barakah and blessings from Prophet And those whom take it and they become fruitful in life, well the obligation is then you have to give back to the tariqah. So that from yours, your share they get it and they replant it again for more people. The projects that we do is not one for one, you send you know, ten dollars then you get a ten dollar well. But they have to take that ten dollars and go get three wells and two foods and two orphanages and two this and two that. It's a continuous flow that has to continue. It's not a one for one exchange. So the ones whom understood this reality of tariqah then they're very supportive. They support with everything Allah has given to them. Even their fingers can support, they share articles, they do every type of khidmat possible is to be of service. And that, that's a, a funny point on this word of service. So throughout you'll hear this word in hadith that a woman is to serve her husband, husband is to serve his family. But shaitan plays with this word, right? We have this word and it's called khidmat. Our service is to Allah right? As a result of my service to Allah I have agreed to be of service to His creation. See how, how much nicer that sounds than to say, oh Shay, He serves us. But shaitan will take our words and switch them and say, oh you go out tell the people, I'm to serve you. That doesn't sound very nice and polite. Oh a man has to serve this, the woman has to serve, no woman doesn't serve anyone. But in her service to Allah her khidmat is to her family and to her children. This is her service and her ibadah to Allah Same for the man, he serves no one, he serves but Allah As a result of his service to Allah his khidmat is to his family, his wife and his community. Same with the shaykh. You can't go around and say, he's a servant of the people, that would be demeaning, he's a servant of Allah 
And his agreement with Allah is serve my creation, take care of them. So this is, a, this is our entire way, our entire life is to be of service. This is our worshipness to Allah If you think you're just worshipping Allah for yourself, to yourself, by yourself, that's not Islam. My service to Allah my worshipness to Allah was to be of service. And he said, if you love me, serve my creation. If you love Sayyidina Muhammad serve those whom love him, make their lives to be more comfortable, inspire them, teach them, bring them, nurture them, shepherd them back towards this reality, not into the hands of the wolf. So everyone should feel like that at home. Of course, everyone should say, of course I'm a servant of Allah and my service to Allah is to take care of my house, my family. But now everyone lost that, they don't want to serve Allah and they want to wash somebody else's home and they want to clean somebody else's business. Why? Serve Allah and take care of your home, that's the highest reward and the highest honour. This is your khidmat and your service to your Lord Almighty. So it's about how shaitan wants to reword all of our teachings and understandings. Alhamdulillah shaitan does what he wants and Allah's plan is much higher because of guided awliya and, and the, the guided shaykhs. So our life is of service inshaAllah and that is all in the service of Allah InshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi thank you so much for the new TikTok channel, it's truly amazing. But when we watch the channel we get strange ads. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one because people are not familiar with these technologies. Somebody also emailed that, <clears throat> oh, well, I come to the channel and the ads on YouTube, they're very bad ads, say, what is with these ads, what are these ads? But I tell you something that you, you probably didn't know that these ads that come to you are not from our channel, they're not based on my browsing. Every ad that comes to you on social media is based on your browsing, what you like, what you've been clicking on, what you've been watching. They follow you, they don't follow me. You're not coming to our YouTube channel and, and they're sending you all my, uh, I want to go for Umrah tickets and all of these things. It's following what you've been clicking on all day long and then sending you ads via the different social media sites. So it's people exposing themselves, they say, oh there's so many inappropriate ads <laughs> because wherever you're clicking all day long they're feeding you the ads to you, to your desire. Not to my desire or the channel's desire, they don't think, oh this channel likes these things therefore we're going to send to this audience these things. But all of social media advertising, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, social, uh, Instagram, you're going to get an ad based on what you have been clicking. So there's nothing to do with our channels, just you have to clean up your cache and your memory files and don't click on so many uh, things and you won't see those ads inshaAllah. Click on Medina, click on the sh Mawlid, click on the shiuk and then all your ads will be about Islam inshaAllah. And I told you before these, these shaitans how they operate, you get every type of feed suggestion on Facebook. Do this, 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 all these things come onto your Facebook that you'd never ever wanted. But we are the only channel and the only feed that actually Facebook asks, do you want to see less of him? All the inappropriate, like I have hundred animal things coming on my channel, I don't want to see all these things, there's no way to get rid of them, spam, spam, spam. But when we come up it asks, do you want to see less of this guy? <laughs> so you can see how shaitan works, he sends you every type of garbage and anything good he asks you, you we can get rid of him from the channel if you like. So, <laughs> so inshaAllah Allah uh, protect us all inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. As we build our energy and meditative practices to help guide us through our decision making, how can we make the right decisions in the meanwhile when we don't have the senses? The email. 
Yeah, you're not supposed to make the decisions, you're supposed to connect and connect in your ibadah that when you connect your heart, you meditate, meditate, ask for inspiration in regards to worshipness. That I should read more, I should do more Maddala al khirat, I should read, recite more of Isma al-Husna. Never about, I should contact this person, I should uh, just write an article about this or… Those things are from the nafs. Those things you email helpme at nurmuhammad.com that I'm thinking about this, 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 this and then you can calibrate what your understanding with the reply inshaAllah that comes back that meditate, build your meditation, here are the articles on this, here are the articles on that. So the, the things that we act on are worshipness, praying more, the things that are hard against the nafs but not the things that are, are based on, you know, should I comment on this, should I write a fatwa on this and all these different things that the ego wants to do and bother people, should I correct this person for the way that they're, they're praying or reciting or doing. So no, these things are, are not to be done based on inspiration because inspiration can be hijacked by the bad characteristics. So that which the inspiration is important is in worshipness, that I should pray more, I should be fasting the next day, I should do all of these things. Those are hard to follow and those are the ones that people should be doing, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Sayyidi, should pain feel pleasurable? Should tears be sweet no matter the source? What's the meaning of finding love in tragedy? I don't know if that sounds like a, a sad <laughs> song, I didn't know to think. I don't want to go into philosophies yet but uh, yeah. That if, if for Allah's sake then, then every thorn has a reality. So we said before our life is a, is a gul al-Muhammadi, they call rose in English. The rose is called the Muhammadan flower, gul al-Muhammadi. And our path is to traverse the stem to get to the flower. The flower is the fragrance, the bouquet, the, the essence and the oil. But nobody got to the flower without going through the thorns. So we don't have to make it a, a romantic love story but life is filled with thorns. So if every thorn you're going to start cursing, yelling and screaming then you, you're going to be a scary path because our life is just filled with thorns, tests and difficulties. And it's through the thorn that you actually hit, you know if you take this thorn and go, ah and then smash the flower means you crushed your path. So this is about traversing with patience and, oh that was difficult and they even hold the, the rose and blood come from their hands because the thorns are might, are so many. But they'll never let go of the way of Prophet So this is a, is a, is a difficult path. So to be patient through adversity, patient through difficulty but always exhibiting the best of character. That you go around and think that people think you have good character, they've only seen goodness from you or you're like a stink bug. You know what a stink bug is? I just saw it, you, there's a… in BC there's a plague of stink bugs that as soon as you get near the bug it it puts out a, a stink that like an oil that get on you, can't get it off like a skunk make horrific smell and they're now a plague in BC area. Yeah, so it's interesting, right? But we can't have our life like that, that you're like a bug that you put out a, a horrible fragrance and a, and a very bad experience for anyone who gets near you. That's not tariqa. Tariqa is that although you walk on a broken path, you are upright servant of Allah in which nobody should know what difficulty you face, the whole world shouldn't know because then you're like a stink bug, you just want to make everybody fragranced from your difficulty and everybody have then a foul experience with you and that's not tariqah. Tariqah is th that you're, you're beautific and fragrant and nobody should see the hardship of what you face on your face. Your face shouldn't be red and shouldn't be readable. 
for what difficulties that you have. And that's the upright character of Prophet's teachings. When you looked at Prophet it was a shining moon, wasn't a face of despair constantly showing every type of sadness and difficulty. So this tariqah doesn't teach that, nobody teach that. But people want attention, they want somebody to draw an understanding and attention to their condition. And that's not from faith because Allah can only change a condition, not the people. For all the people to know what hardship you're in is of no value and no benefit. What are the people going to do? They're not going to change it. Allah can only change the condition of a person. So as a result, let the people to be happy and to, to find pleasure in your presence and that's then the Gulim Muhammadi. Those whom you find like that, they are the Gulim Muhammadi, they are the Muhammadan flowers. That although there are thorns on their life, they give a beautific fragrance continuous and people are pleased to be around them. Other people are jealous and they don't understand why they're like a stink bug and why the other one is like a rose. And that's exactly the thing is that you want to give out all the badness and the other one is trained on how to give goodness and, and peacefulness and calmness. Doesn't mean his own life or her own life is like that. But this is the example they have to give out and this is the Islamic way, the Muhammadan way inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. If we share a clip of your sohbah to send to family members as a means to correct bad character, is it from the nafs? <laughs> yeah, especially if you just left their home and they're saying something and you find a clip from us and send it to them, then you're using the shaykh like a weapon. And that people do that at home, you know, when the, the, the one person doesn't want to eat bagels, shaykh doesn't like bagels, don't serve me bagels anymore. Then you, you, you start to use the weaponized shaykh, that's why I said you're weaponizing love. So the, the symbol that they should be loving, you making it like a bullet and throwing it at them, they're, they're going to say something harsh against you and the shaykh and then now you're in trouble with Allah. Because Allah says, don't do that about him. Don't speak a harsh word to unbelievers lest they come back and say something bad about Allah So the servant is responsible for that. You, you, you curse somebody else's religion, they start cursing what you believe in and Allah said, you cause that. So again with the hikmah and wisdom, I would wait a couple weeks when they forgot about the incidents and then you can sh send it out as a <laughs> random video to people. But that's the teaching, that's the way we teach is that we teach indirectly for people to understand and to take the practices and to take the guidance inshaAllah. But not too direct in which people would be offended and then start to retaliate or, or have retribution. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Uh, this person saying, Sayyidi, want to take bayah and want you to be my shaykh, kindly help. Excuse me? Uh, she wants to take bayah and wants you to be her shaykh. Inshallah, uh, the shaykh they just email help me at nurmuhammad.com. Inshallah, the bayat, we'll send the bayat on the digital platforms, inshallah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. What characteristics are the worst that we should absolutely abstain from and refine in ourselves? I think what we talked about last night was probably up there. We, we don't want to go too much into to worst, people can imagine what the worst are. So the, you know, when, when your house has a, has a broken pipe, you know what that is. Because it's, it's everywhere is over flooding with water, so everyone knows what's bad. That's why we don't need to define that. But what can be very dangerous in your home, Mawlana Shaykh would always describe, is a pipe that's leaking. The things that you may not think are bad but are extremely dangerous in the home, the character and they just kind of sprouting leaks everywhere and that was last night's discussion. That when the characters are, are aggressive and rough and, and uh, not respectful and people lose respect for one another, they think it's something small. But these are big leaks that lead to big problems and those, those are, are, are outright dangerous. Now to go in and say, no this haram, this haram, this haram, what people would probably know all those. 
So those are the given and the obvious but the ones that people maybe think are not so obvious have to do with character. When somebody is disrespectful and rude and, and uh, has a bad demeanor it destroys the relationship. And at the same time other side has to be loving, caring, compassionate. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a two-way street in which all individuals have to participate and they have to have good characteristics and they have to be of service to Allah And this only happens if they have a true love, right? If they have a true love for Allah true love for Prophet they do a khidmat. We don't serve anyone because we're interested in serving people. We actually don't like serving people because of the badness of people's character. So if you think there's anybody who likes to do the service, it doesn't work that way. In all reality people will sell you uh, faster than they sell a bag of coins. But why we do what we do is our love for Prophet that it pleases him as a result we endure a lot of difficulty, humiliation and, and hardship and, and bad energies, all of that because our love for Prophet Well then everybody should be like that. You should make peace in your home not for the sake of each other because you're doing it wrong if it's that's the case. Because that's like me saying, I'm serving people for the sake that people will be happy. Oh, they're not going to be happy, they'll sell me out in no time. I didn't do it for them. I did it for Allah and for Prophet to be happy with me. If he's happy with me, I don't care who likes me and don't like me. The next day they like me, they don't like me. The next day they came, they went, they don't like to come anymore, who cares? My interest is in Prophet If he's happy, and I did what I was supposed to do and I did my service with sincerity then I become loving and I love his creation because this is the character that he wants from me. So people have it wrong when they think, oh, I'm not going to serve you at home, I'm not going to serve you, I'm not going to serve you. They're doing it wrong and thinking wrong, the intention is completely wrong. If it's Allah you love and Prophet that you love then when you do the service in the home and you cook in the home and you're kind with the children in the home, you're kind with your spouses in the home, Prophet is happy with that person. And that's why we serve, that's what the, that's the love that we want. We want the reward from Allah and Prophet because that becomes your ummah. If the shaykh has a thousand, ten thousand people, you have only four people, you, you can't do it with four people as a khidmat for Prophet and if you can't then that, that speaks… that speaks miles. So this life of ours is a service and we serve Allah inshaAllah. Bhaana Rabbika Rabbil Izzata man yasifu wa salaamun al mursaleen alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Illa sharifa Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa kiram. ولا مشايخنا في طريقة نشبندية العلية وصائر وصاداتنا والصدقين على الفاتح. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. Inshallah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below. The programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five bands, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.